Daniel Ludwig was an unusual and incredibly generous and visionary uh, individual. And uh, his gift has uh, enabled uh, cancer research all over the world. The basic idea was to do something useful, not just interesting, to do something that would actually help patients. It also established it in such a way that these researchers could do the, the most groundbreaking research and focus on the most important questions without having to worry about where the next uh, level of funding would come from. One of the first things we addressed was trying to determine all of the genetic changes that occur in a human cancer cell. And the challenge that we've been doing with Ludwig Money is to find out practical and efficient and sensitive ways where we can detect this rare cancer genetic material in these blood samples so that we can use that for the early early detection of cancer. At the time, we had known for about two or two and a half decades that cancer in it, in it is essentially a defect in our genetic instructions. But we were only able to look at one gene at a time or a few suspect genes. Uh, with this money, we were able to look at all the genes. It's as if we were able to fingerprint all the possible criminals in, in an area and find out which ones were responsible for the crime. And in this way, we were able to get an unprecedentedly deep understanding of what's occurring in human cancer. This is an example of sequencing from a tumor. The gift from Ludwig that established the Ludwig Center at Johns Hopkins University allowed us to be the first laboratory to define all the genetic mutations that occurred in any common human cancer. We've been charged with thinking out of the box, and not just thinking, though, and doing out of the box um, with the long-term funding facilitating that kind of thinking and doing. This is the way that uh, a lot of the discoveries made in our lab uh, have been possible is by using um, these kinds of next generation instruments. They allow us to do in a day what it used to take us literally a year to do. This is an amazing gift. <laughs> uh, I think it dwarfs uh, all other gifts made specifically for cancer research that have ever been made by anyone to anyone. So uh, it's unique uh, in its uh, breadth and in its purpose. We kind of start from ground zero um, and we try uh, to think what kinds of information are we lacking that would be instrumental to the design of new approaches for either preventing or detecting or, or for treating cancer. What are the missing pieces in the cancer puzzle? We're not interested in, in hammering a nail into the weakest part of the wood. We're interested in hammering a nail into the foundation of the wood, the hardest part. The C represents the, the sequence in normal tissue and the G represents the mutation that occurs in the cancer. This money uh, comes at a perfect time. Uh, we are the first generation in the history of mankind to know the human genetic code. We are the first generation to have the technology to define the mistakes in that genetic code that occur in human cancers. And now we have the money to exploit that. We want to use it to develop ways to detect cancer early by looking for the mutations that occur in human cancer. And in another way, we want to look at these genetic changes and study them and figure out new ways that we can help with the therapy, uh, develop uh, cancer-specific therapies. They, they are higher risk. They take many more years. Um, but ultimately that's what we want to achieve. Are these the protein samples? Oh. Yes. <laughs> because cancer research funding in general is so, is so precious and so limited, you know, funding agents can't always fund the, the, the high-risk research. They have to play it safe. Uh, this funding allows cancer researchers, some of the best around the world, to to take those risks and swing for the fences. She's got a DVT, but she still has evidence of disease. Cancer is a very difficult disease to treat because basically the enemy here is our own cells. 
Cancer cells are very similar to us. There may only be a hundred specific genetic changes in coding genes that distinguish a normal cell from a, a cancer cell. And we need to figure out how to use that to specifically kill cancer cells. The magnitude of Ludwig gift and, and the way it was given is such that it will not stop to fund research when our, our current center directors retire. It will support cancer uh, research for many generations until it is beaten. Ultimately, we're trying to identify a special strain of this bacteria. To say until cancer is beaten is, is, is a very profound word, but it's actually in the gift. When we feel that cancer is not the problem it is today, uh, there's the opportunity that these gifts will support other biomedical research. And 30 years ago, it was not at all clear what, what cancer was. I mean, it was kind of a black box. Uh, there were lots of theories, but, but no real answers. Uh, and now, we, we really do understand cancer, uh, at least in an outline form, better than we understand many other diseases. And that understanding has truly been revolutionary. But the next revolution, and the most important one, will actually be bringing that knowledge to patients. Ludwig Cancer Research is poised to make that leap and to participate in that next revolution. The Ludwig Gift uh, has enabled us to do, has inspired us to do, uh, and we intend to make good on it.